We're back in the parks for our weekly Disneyland construction update. And I'd like to know just what the heck they're doing with that Mickey Sorcerer hat. We need to acknowledge this in Galaxy's Edge. And the guitar pick stage looks to be getting some kind of hat. But first, let's get on the Mark Twain for a quick update from Tiana's Palace. Since our last construction update, Tiana's Palace officially opened. We were there on opening day and found quite a scene. But the one thing that I want to talk about today in relation to that is the effect on mobile order and standby. It took us about an hour to navigate the standby queue we saw on that day. Today, I got on the Mark Twain and found this queue. This is about, I want to say this is like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. The queue are those guests along the brick wall. And it's, so it's still there. It's not running nearly. It's not, certainly there's no switchbacks or anything like that. It's a single queue. It does extend along that brick wall and around the side of things. So uh, certainly the, the much of the hype and demand has abated. You won't have an hour long wait. Standby right there would be, I'm guessing 20 or 30 minutes tops. As for mobile order, they were gone at 8 a.m. on that first opening day. I've heard since then that they're gone by 2 or 3 p.m. in the afternoon now for mobile order. So you do still need to plan ahead. You do still need to think about placing your mobile order. Don't forget that you can tell now. You can choose a window. It didn't used to be the case, but you can now choose a window and tell the app what time you want to pick up your food. So you can, you can book your mobile order at 7 a.m. for noon or for 5 p.m. or for whenever you like. So plan ahead for now, for the short term. I would say probably by the time we do this, maybe in a month or so, it'll be fairly normal like things are at any other quick service location. But for, for the short term, do plan ahead just a little bit at least. Oh, and by the way, the food is great. <laughs> the food, I, you may have already watched our video. The food is great. I, we enjoyed it very, very much. I'm happy with the new menu. I missed the French dip, but the food is great. All right, what's next? I guess Tiana's Bayou Adventure while we're on the Mark Twain. We'll, we'll keep going in this direction, getting uh, a long view through the Columbia. Can't see anything from here. You know what? I want to pause right here because that looks... That's the lift hill. That's the second lift hill where you meet the Harry Potter owl. Ah, I, that looks like they may have scraped a little bit more of the veneer off the front of that bit. Well, I don't know why, but that looks more scrubbed than I've seen in the past, but I could, I could just be having poor memory. And then here's now, we're at the turnaround. Boy, this is, okay, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought for a second, I thought, did they take the Critter Country sign down? That's the Critter Country sign right there. Uh, you're looking at the back side of it, and it, it's really strange to see it in this way because normally you're you're expecting to see that sign shrouded in in foliage in landscaping. You know, it, it's kind of you know in a like a, a tree or a bushy area there. I can't remember now off the top of my head. I'll have, I'll have to look back at some old footage or whatever. But um, it's naked. The sign is really really naked. And uh, if you keep looking right there, see that pole right there, that light fixture and the concrete base around it. That gives you a pretty good indication of just how much they have scraped. Again, I, I use that word. It's kind of an invasive word, but they are really taking this thing apart out front. Uh, I mean, it, to rebuild it back together again, but you can see, man, what was there before? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that, that fixture wasn't a, a big concrete block like it is now. There was something all over it and around it. So how much of that did they dig up? Uh, and and it, when it comes to sort of, you know, how things relate to another, spatial awareness and that kind of thing, I, I tend to forget sometimes that the, there's about five feet of space, maybe more, between the wall and the actual railing, the railing along which guests would queue. Like that's the queue right there. You know, when, when, the, when the queue would extend around the, around the side of the attraction, guests would queue up along that fence, very close to it. So I, I feel like, I, for my, my mind's eye always wants me to think that there's something that's supposed to be there, but that's just, that's path. That's five feet of path in between the wall and the attraction. So uh, yeah, what we're looking at here are, you know, as we noted last week, was those boulders and stuff like that. But otherwise it's, it's kind of, 
it's just staging that I can see in this point. And obviously that, <laughs> that concrete cinder block thing uh, that has just been decimated. Here's, here's a look from Harbor Galley. I mean, it's just scaffolding. And they still got that, the top is still covered in plastic wrap up there. Just noticed that. Sliding down the path a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, it's hard to say, but I, I mean, they really have scraped a lot of that veneer off that, that, what do they call that? The bridge sort of tunnel thing, the lift hill there. What do they call that? I don't know what they call that kind of structure. Front view. Notice the little wood thing that the, I was asking, what, what is that wood thing? And what, what's it there for? That looks to be gone, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see it over there in the corner of the, of the frame. A week 15? Week 15, I think. <laughs> uh, secret path is still open. And as we mentioned last week, all the quitters are gone from the briar patch, but the briar patch sign is still up there, which is curious. If they're removing their quitters because they refer to or, or are from the briar patch, when are they going to get rid of Briar Rabbit and the briar patch sign? By the way, my expectation while we're in here is that they're not going to update the interiors of this location very much, if at all. I am expecting quite a bit of that to be preserved. So we'll come back to that in another 65 weeks. Standard here in the entrance, the proper entrance to Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Waiting for the day when we start seeing theming getting applied here. Quitter House is still there. Situation normal along the backside of TBA. Okay, this is through the Hungry Bear. And again, yeah, that thing is gone. Wasn't it? I don't know where it was now before, but it's gone. That wooden shoot looking thing is gone. Is it where that, where is it, was it where that block box is now? I think that's just a squirrel. I, I want to know what that is right there, but I think that's just a squirrel. <laughs> It looked like it was part of a bigger apparatus, but I don't think so. I think I thought maybe it was some kind of pulley mechanism, but when you look in it, it's that's just a squirrel. The squirrel survived. You know, maybe that we have to watch out for that to see how long that squirrel survives. But I feel like they would have taken that squirrel down by now if they were going to get rid of it. So the squirrel is not a Brer character, perhaps. <laughs> this is what this is what this show is, you guys. This. Is what <laughs> That's what this show is, is wondering what happened to the squirrel. 30-minute videos about squirrel. <laughs> I mean, that's just a squirrel, right? Or a chipmunk? I don't know. Squirrel. I keep thinking SpongeBob. All right, Liz picked up this shot with Grandpa, it looks like, from The Secret Path. and I mean, there, here. You can't. There's nothing green left on this mountain. Except for the mossy hues on that structure there, you know, the lift hill. But they have, they are, they have definitely scrubbed any piece of greenery off of this mountain. And some of the rocks, too. You can see some of those rocks have been uh, hollowed out. You know, there's a big hole in that one right there. They are hollow. Those rocks are hollow. They're not actual boulders. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Uh, man, 65 more weeks to go of this, or something like that. That's a lovely view. Thank, thank goodness they haven't touched that yet. That's a lovely view. Okay, I need to, I want to, we need to acknowledge something here. Hera showed up at Galaxy's Edge. We've seen Ahsoka, and now we've got Hera and Chopper, by the way. But I want to acknowledge something. One of the things we were promised with Galaxy's Edge were aliens, alien characters in the land. We were going to run into alien characters, and we never got them, and people were upset. That was a point of criticism for Galaxy's Edge. You promised us this. We didn't get it. 
we're getting it now. That is an alien character. They have put somebody in a full costume and the green face and everything. We need to acknowledge that. We need to say, you did what you said you were going to do. And, you know, sort of, I, I don't want to say take back the criticism because it's been a few years, so obviously we should have had this already. But they've gotten here now, so we need to acknowledge that they did do that. I'm very happy, very proud that Disney has, has given us this because this is exceptional. This isn't just Ma Mando in a costume, you know, which, I mean, it was great. Mando was great, don't get me wrong. But it's much easier to do than this. Now, I'm hoping that Hera lasts. I'm hoping this is not the kind of thing that they're doing just to promote the Ahsoka show right now uh, and that she sticks around. But I know, I, can, I will acknowledge again, it's very difficult to run a character out there every single day for you know, however many meet and greets they do per day in that, that green makeup. That cannot be easy to, to keep. That cannot be easy to put on and then to keep fresh all day. So uh, I'm crossing my fingers. First, I want to say thank you, Disney. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for going the extra. You went extra on this, and I appreciate that. But please do consider, because I feel like this is an underappreciated... Okay. If people don't respond to this, then I don't want to hear any complaints. <laughs> you know what I mean? If people don't respond to the fact, you know, this should be a big deal. This should be a big deal to anybody who's, who's hypercritical of Galaxy's Edge. And you need to show your support. I, this is, I wonder how earnest people are in their criticisms and if they're just trying to be critical. Because if this doesn't resonate with guests, then, you know, then your complaints are, are hollow, I guess, for this. I mean, some of the complaints are very legitimate, but we need to acknowledge that they did the thing that they promised and that we asked for. Sorry, I was on a soapbox there. Tend to around a little bit every now and then because I feel like it's, sometimes it's a one-sided argument against Disney sometimes and that we need to support them when they do a good thing. Now, what I would like to know is what they're doing with the Sorcerer Hat in downtown Disney or at the Disneyland Hotel. This thing has been under scrim and scaffold for months, right? Months? And this week, actually, Liz said, hey, look at that. They took some of the scrim down. And you can see inside, you can see the hat from the ground. And it's kind of wild looking. I mean, I'm sure it, it looks worse than it actually is. It looks more invasive than it actually is. But that, I mean, it, <laughs> wow, what on the heck are they doing? It, it's just, it's probably still just paint. You know, the things that are covering, the, you know, that looks like that's just the brim of the hat. And they need to paint that thing blue. But they've got it wrapped up in some sort of, you know, it's probably just like, you know, painter's tape. You know, they're, they're covering it up so they don't, they're going to maybe two-tone it, I guess. That's why you do a thing like that, right? That's why you, you put painter's tape and you put paper or whatever around it so that you only paint a certain section. I don't remember what that hat looked like before. I don't. I just thought it was straight blue. But is that possibly what they're doing? Is they're giving it some kind of different look? Which, again, this seems very unnecessary, but, I mean, good for them for trying to do something great, do something better with that hat. I know, it's like I said, that, 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 that looks scary. Been a long time. If it's just paint, it's been a long time for just paint. Maybe they did reinforce it. Maybe they, they put a new brim down there. Anyway, thanks, Liz, for getting those shots. Okay, so while we're here, we got a view of Din Tai Fung at Downtown Disney. It's starting, to, it's starting to close in. You can see less daylight coming out of that structure. You've got the cinder block wall in the back, the swoopy structure there on the front, and there's no daylight there. So they're closing it off. It's starting to get, it's starting to get finished on that out, you know, the exterior. And then this is from Downtown Disney, and it looks like they have appended some you know, I, I don't know if I want to call those forms. They could be the eventually forms. So what are they putting? They I don't, you know what? I got to see what the concept art looks like real quick. Yeah, I mean, I don't see, the, the, the forms are, are adding a, a, a bit of height. Potential forms. I'm not sure that they are, and that could be, the, 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 that's not what they're doing, but it looks like they're building some kind of hat on top of the, 
guitar pick, it's got to have some other purpose. That's what, okay, so part of that, it does look, look back there at the, at Dentai Fung, the swoopy, those are, they, they have put a, a surface on the top there. I can't really tell because the angle here is poor. I don't have an overhead. And if I zoom in, it'll start to get pixelated. So it's difficult to tell what that is. But that looks to be the first layer of some kind of roof being applied to the Dentai Fung building. Amazing. Nothing to see here. I think Liz was just making sure the people kept off the stage. She's standing guard at this moment. But you can also see the new hat on top of the, on top of the guitar pick stage. And there you can also see, yeah, there's definitely something there, swoopiness on the uh, Din Tai Fung building. And then there's a closer shot of the hat. Difficult to discern what these guys are doing down here. This is shot from the Disneyland Hotel on the ground as you walk into downtown Disney. That looks like to be... The large concrete structure that isn't actually a Best Buy. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop using that term, Best Buy. It's a joke. I nickname things. I'll stop doing that. I promise. I'll, stop. I'll just keep it straight. This is a large concrete building that resembles a Best Buy. I don't know what they're doing here, uh, but it was fun to watch. Look at that. I don't know what they're... I, I, you know, that does look new. Before, it was just a box. Now, we have, we have left the box zone. And now we're getting, you know, we're getting features that are emanating from the box. So that the, you know what, let me uh, go back and look at the downtown Disney. Yes. So that's what they're building right there. Cool. <laughs> that's what they're building. Why does that make me happy? <laughs> I love watching things to sort of create, get created and, and to, to become. I love the becoming, the transformation. Thank you for that shot, Liz. I don't think I would have gotten that because I don't ever go back in this part of the park. I probably wouldn't have seen this. ESPN zone. You can see the new concrete there. That used to be behind uh, the fence, the scrim fence. That's all new concrete down there, and you can see they've also moved the fence now over to the opposite side. They're going to work on the other side near to the building formerly known as the Rainforest Cafe. And it looks like they're giving it the same design style, the same multicolor sort of angular directional design pattern to that concrete, although we're going in the wrong direction, so we can't really see where it is that they're trying to send us. But uh, yeah, and then that's going to extend over to... Rainforest Cafe. And that's the entrance from the downtown, from the Disneyland Hotel parking lot. That's going to get remodeled as well, too. I'm really looking forward to when that, they take that, that sign, that entrance sign screams 90s, you know, the 90s motif, which I'm not a fan of. I don't like 90s construction, to be perfectly honest. I'm not a fan of it. Tango Road Terrace, they're still working on that. I still have no idea what they're doing. I've asked Liz to see if she can't pop her uh, camera over that fence next week, so hopefully we can get a shot. Although it looks like there's just, it's fence and then another fence behind it, so I don't think we're going to be able to see anything. But we'll double check. But I'm not positive what they're doing there at Tangaroa. Uh, the monorail slide, is still, it looks like the whole pool is, slot, is closed. I see no guests in that pool. So they, they God, imagine. Imagine going to Disneyland Hotel in the middle of summer and being told you can't go swimming. I'm sure they're sending them over to the Pixar Pier Hotel or the Grand Californian, but those are already full too, right? So there's got to be a million people at one of those hotels, man. Uh, okay, so this is, yeah, this is construction crews doing whatever it is they're doing at the monorail slide. They're busy at work. I hope they finish this up soon because that really bums me out. That really bums me out. Uh, Liz to Grandpa, she's trying to see through into the backside of the DVC tower. Nothing, you can't really see much here other than, than some hard hats back there, but I have no idea what they're looking at or what they're doing. Oh, he's using a surveying, he's looking through one of those surveying deals. Wow, straight on through the slide. That's the, that's the pool on the other side of the building that those guys are working on. I'm not sure what those structures are, but he's scraping something off of those. A bunch of like, are those crosses? Okay. 
Let's see if we can identify those. That'll be fun. It's a, it's a shade structure that they're building on the opposite side of the pool. Cool again. What was nothing now seems something kind of interesting. Right? That's what that is, isn't it? It's got to be. What else could it be? On our way out of the Disneyland Hotel area, in the path into downtown Disney, Liz found these guys. They're probably just doing concrete work. This is the backside of Pixar Place Hotel. That is, they're just demolishing that area back there. Wow. Curious what's going on there. It looks invasive. Here is, this is the Maple something or other restaurant that's being installed in the exterior of the entrance to the Disneyland or the Pixar Pier Hotel. We've seen the concept art for this. That's what they're, I mean, they've made some progress on there. There's still a ways to go. It's been a while. It's been a couple months, right, since they've opened the, the hotel, since they opened Pixar Place Hotel, but they, they were nowhere near finishing the restaurant. Great Maple? What is it called? Great Maple? I'm really looking forward to dining there uh, because they, there's a donut. <laughs> I think it's a donut. Is it a donut that I want to get there? Oh, my God, it's delicious. I love maple. Um, the design, I'm not impressed with this design of the, of the interior. It's very generic, and it's not at all what I would like from a Disney hotel. You know, I thought this was going to be a boring uh, update, but because, you know, the big news is over. But this has been fun, man. I'm really enjoying this. Golden Zephyr is closed still. It's going to be down for a few weeks. Um, nobody noticed. <laughs> I love to make fun of the Golden Zephyr. It's like a hobby of mine. We're going to jump back into Disneyland for, uh, at Fantasyland and the Royal Theater, or I should say uh, Princess Fantasy Fair, Royal Hall. Royal Theater is untouched, but the Royal Hall is still getting its paint job. I have no idea how long this will be going on, but it's just as we left it last week. It could be, you know, there was a, there's a relationship between this, the refurb that they're doing at, or they did at Red Rose Tavern, Toads, and Peter Pan. All of those, this is why they're updating the Royal Hall and not the Royal Theater. I believe that all four are, were being done and are related because the one thing that they have in common is that they are the closest in radius to the low-flying fireworks that happen during fireworks. There's, there's, there's fireworks that are set off back in backstage Toontown area, but there's also fireworks that they set off in the vicinity of the castle, which is why they close the castle and, and parts of Fantasyland every night when they do fireworks. I believe that the, the fallout from those low-level fireworks has done some, some kind of damage. I don't know if they changed how they do them or, or, or what, but I feel like all four of those things, that's the reason why they closed Peter Pan and Toads and Red Rose Tavern. Well, they didn't close it, but they you know, got a refurb and why this is getting a refurb now as well. I mean, it's nothing terrible, but there was some sort of fallout damage from those fireworks that, that has necess necessitated this. So whatever theories were being floated earlier, you know, by a, uh, when, when Peter Pan first went down in Toads, nothing to do with the attraction. There's no, you know, other things going on inside there. I believe that was all related to fallout from fireworks, a little protector. So let's go to the Adventureland treehouse to see if we can discover anything new. This is, the story's, we're winding this down. This is one, matter of fact, Disney has come out and said, expect the Adventureland Treehouse to open in the fall of this year. Now that's a, that's a whole three month stretch. I predicted October 1st, by, by October 1st was my prediction. And uh, I mean, I guess we're still on track for that. What are we, we got like two, we got 20 days left. We got almost three weeks. It feels like they still got a ways to go to get there by three weeks. So that's, I'm not sure how, but they, man, that's a lot of scaffolding still up. But it could be, we can't see hardly anything that's going on on the ground anymore. Uh, so much is being obscured. But the rest of the treehouse is done. I would be willing to bet that the son's room is done. I'd be willing to bet that the daughter's room is done. There's a staircase. 
I think she's trying to find how that staircase, yeah, she's now going down. There, there it goes down. The platform is right about there. So there, oh, there it is. There it is. They've, they've attached it right there. They've attached the staircase to the platform that takes you down to the ground. So that's done. Well, I should say it's attached. It does look like there's still crew up there, by the way. That's going to be the path into what used to be the path out of, now the path into the music room. And it looks like they are still doing some work up there. It's the railing has still got a uh, plastic covering on there. So there it is again. There's the, there's the connecting uh, path. It's kind of flat. It doesn't, it's not a stairs. It's just a, a flat bridge. It's, I, that's the, not a path, a bridge. It's a bridge that's connecting. And now we're not looking at that anymore. <laughs> now we're going back over to the daughter's room, it looks like. Uh, music room, daughter's room, etc. <laughs> and, and this segment brought to you by our correspondent, Liz, our woman on the ground with the camera. She actually called me from downtown Disney. She said, oh my God, David, they have actual pumpkins out there. They have real pumpkins out there. Not the kind you're looking, you know, fine in the Pluto, Pluto's pumpkin, whatever. She was very excited to see these pumpkins. And I'm like, I don't care. Nobody cares about these pumpkins. Nobody. Watch this go nowhere. <laughs> but she was, they make, pumpkins make my wife happy. So this is why I'm showing you these because uh, I love my wife and I want to appreciate the fact that she loves these pumpkins. For what it's worth, uh, yeah, she, she ran that on Instagram and it didn't, it didn't resonate with <laughs> Instagram either. <laughs> Uh, by the way, they, they, they've done these real pumpkins before. They do the real pumpkins every year, especially the ones with all the, you know, the, the I forget, the, the different kinds of gourds, not just regular pumpkins, but the different variety of them. It looks fun. It's a great season. Uh, it looks like they, oh, wait, okay, so last week, we're at Catal. La, or in the previous weeks, we saw them finish that circle. It looks like they've now added more steel in the center. The inner circle has now been completed also. I don't have an overhead of this one as well, but by the ne next time we go there, I'll, I'll try to get one. But you've got the outer circle, and then you've got the inner circle now. So uh, this, is, this is moving quickly. This is moving very quickly, and it'll probably be done first. This will be the first thing that's done of the new Downtown Disney updates. That's my prediction. And I think that's it, you guys. That's our coverage of Disney on Construction this week. Hope you enjoyed. Do be sure to subscribe to our channel, especially if you like updates like these, construction updates. We do these every week typically on Monday, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Then follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked, on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's Fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. If you like our show and want to show you support, please do consider joining our Patreon camp, pain at patreon.com slash Fresh Baked. I just lost Dcam. Dcam just went down, so it's just you and me. Uh, patreon.com slash Fresh Baked. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh baked. I went off on the pumpkins, yes. And how much you love them and that I love you and that's why they're in the video. <laughs> <laughs>